In this video, we're going to add multiplayer to our game. So what I'm going to use is Photon Pawn 2. So let's go and find it in the asset store and open in Unity. And there it is. I'll import it and we get the Pawn Wizard. If you didn't get this window, you can go to window and right here under Photon Unity Networks, click on the Pawn Wizard and you're going to get this window. So now I'm going to go to the dashboard and create a new app. I'm using Pawn and I'll name it Among Them. Create. Copy the app ID that you can find right here and let's put it inside here. Click set up project and you can check, make sure that the real ID is in here. So we're done with Photon configuration and now we can add multiplayer functionality to our game. Now a little bit about the game that I'm using here in case you haven't seen other videos on this game. So this game is part of a tutorial series that I'm making. In this tutorial series, the idea is to create a game like Among Us. And in this series, I want to cover a lot of those mechanics from Among Us. Now the series is both in visual scripting using Bolt and C Sharp. So if you're interested to see other videos from this series, there is links to the playlist in the description. But for this video, you're not required to watch the previous videos to understand what's going on here, because I'm going to be focusing on just the multiplayer part of it. And you can follow along implementing on the project that you're working on. In this video, I'm going to be using C Sharp for the logic. Whenever the Bolt version is going to be available, I'll post it on my channel. So subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see that version. But let's get started. So first, I'll create a new game object. I'll call it Photon. And inside this game object, I'm going to connect all the main Photon logic. Let's create a new script. I'll just call it my Photon. I'll move the script file into my scripts folder. And we can go ahead and edit it. So some of the namespaces that I'm going to use in, in this file are Cine Machine, Photon Pawn, and Photon Realtime. So we can go ahead and add that in. And the other thing that I'm going to do is instead of inheriting from Mono Behavior, I'm going to inherit from Mono Behavior Pawn Callbacks. So this way I can overwrite Pawn Callbacks methods. Inside the star method, the first thing I want to do is connect to Photon Servers. And the way you do that is by calling Photon Network that connect using settings. And that's going to use the settings that we configured to make that connection. So once Photon successfully connects to the network, it's going to fire a callback method. And the method that's going to be called is unconnected to master. So we can override that method, unconnected to master. In this method, there are several different things that you can do. You can connect to a lobby, you can create a room, you can join a room. So there's lots of variations of what you can do here. But I'm going to keep it real simple. And what I'm going to do is actually join or create room. To join a room, we'll need room options. So that's what I'm going to do is create a new room option object. And for that room options object, I'm going to set max player to 10. You can change it to whatever you want. After we have the room options, we can join or create room based on those options. To join or create room, we can call photon network dot join or create room. If the room doesn't exist, it's going to actually create it. If the room does exist, we're just going to join it. So we can pass in the room name. I'll just call it room one and the room options. For the third option, I'm just going to pass new. Once we join a room, we're going to get another callback. And that one is called on joined room. So let's do override on joined room. And what I'm going to do is when we join a room, I'm going to instantiate a character object. Now for instantiating a prefab or an object, we actually have to use the Photon Network Instantiate instead of the Unity Instantiate so that Photon can keep track of the state of that game object. So to do that, what you do is Photon Network dot Instantiate, passing the name of the prefab that we want to instantiate. And this prefab needs to be in the resources folder. So we're going to go and move that next. Then the position, I'm just going to leave it at zero and the rotation, I'm going to leave it at Quaternion Identity. Now let's go to Unity and quickly create that folder that we need and it needs to be called resources and move our prefab into that folder. That's the requirement for the photon instantiating to work. So we're going to do that. And in our game, we use Cine Machine to follow our character. So since we instantiated a player, we need to connect the virtual Cine Machine camera to follow our newly created game object. So first, let's save that new game object to a variable. I'll call it new player. And what I'm going to do next is go game object find and the name of our virtual camera is cmvcam1. So I'm going to find it, get a component from that game object, the Cine Machine virtual camera. And in that component, we have a follow option. So we're going to set it to new player transform. So with that, we finished the basic setup with Photon. 
And now we need to go make some changes to our character prefab. So first we need to remove it from our scene so that our characters get created only once someone joins the room. And let's go to resource, select a character. Now in here, we need to add some photon components so that photon can keep track of the state of the object. The main photon component is the photon view. So this component has the ownership information and all of that. And after we have this photon view component, we can start adding other photon components that will sync information that we want to sync. Now to keep track of player position, in my case, I can use two options, the Photon Rigid Body 2D or the Transform View. My character is actually using a Rigid Body 2D, but I'm not looking to sync the Rigid Body 2D. So in my case, I'm just going to use the Transform View and we can select the options that we want to synchronize. And I actually want to synchronize Scale because I'm using Scale to flip my character. Also, the other thing I want to add is the Animator View because I have some animations on my character. And in the animator view, what I want to synchronize is the parameters and I'll select continuous. So that's the three Fulton components that I need to add to my character. And you might have noticed that once I added the other two components, they actually added right here in the observed components. And if it didn't add them in your case, you can drag and drop them there to create the connection. Now, one more thing that we need to change about the character is to disable the collision character with character. And currently my character is on the default layer. What I'm going to do is go add another layer. I'll call it player. And then for the layer, I'll select that layer player to turn off the collision player with player. We can go to project settings and then we can go to physics 2D. And in the layer collision matrix right here, we can find the box where it has player with player, which is right here at the bottom. Turn that off and that will disable the collision player with player which is what I'm looking for. So we're good with all the components that we added. The last thing that we need to do is actually modify our character movement script. So we can go and add its script. And the modification that I need to do here is to make sure that we control only our own character. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the ownership of this character. So we're going to use a namespace photon pawn. We'll need to add another variable photon view. And in the start method, we're going to get the component photon view because the font view contains the information about the ownership of the character. And inside of the update method, I'm going to check if photon view is not mine. I'm going to just return it. If it is mine, it's going to continue executing the control logic that we have here. So that's the last change that we need to do. Now we can save it and test it out. I'll go to build settings, make sure that the full screen mode is in windowed so I can see both of them at the same time. And then I can build and run it. So here is our build version and run the game in Unity as well. As soon as we connect to a room, you can see that we get a character and currently they're both stacked on the same spot. So if we move to the side, we can see that we have two characters and the game is synced. So that's the basic setup for multiplayer. Of course, Photon has lots more options and I'm pretty sure we're not going to end up using all of them, but that's a good start. Let's actually add another player. So right now we have three players. That's going to be it for this video. And the next video, we're going to work a little bit more with multiplayer. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.